Greetings and welcome to another drumroll tutorial. So this one is going to be focused basically on just layers and their uses. Um, I've got a lot of emails and I've seen a lot of comments from people that wanted to understand better uh, how to use layers, what layers do, and the best way I can think of to describe it is layers are kind of like if you were looking straight through a window and the more layers you have on, the more things you have in front of the window. It doesn't mean you can't see out, but depending on what you put um, what you stack up with the layers uh, it can completely change the image. And I use layers myself for doing minor adjustments, sometimes big adjustments, adding completely new images, and so I'm going to go through a couple of the more simple ways I can think of today. So this is an image that I had from uh, the Midsummer Ren Fair, I think this past summer, might have been the year before, but uh, it's a pretty normal, you know, just a, more of a photograph than a manipulation. I've done some editing, I've done some burning and some sharpening, but using this, um, so over here to the right you can see it's a single layer right now. It's just layer one, basically, or background. But if you hit Control J, you duplicate that layer. And you can do this for any layer that you're s currently selected on. Uh, just Control J, or you can go up and select Layer and Duplicate Layer, and it'll give you an exact copy of the one that you have selected. So using that, you can adjust the blending mode of the layer. And again, like the window, the first image up is the one that you're going to be altering, and it'll actually change the rest of the image that's underneath. Every single thing underneath it, depending on what blending mode you have it selected on, it will change that look. So for instance, with this one, it's set to normal at 100% so that we can't see through it. And if you were to take and change it to overlay, that top image is now overlaying the image below it. And since they're the exact same image, it actually changes dramatically the contrast, the colors, uh, some of the details get blown out. And if I select and unselect it, you can see how much just duplicating and using one layer as an overlay can change the scene. This is a little too extreme for my personal taste. I don't like it when this stuff, when images like this are this hard, um, this gritty. But if that's the look you're going for, then it's pretty easy to achieve. And for whatever reason, if you wanted to say artistically go in and erase the top layer in certain parts, I'm gonna go with the size of say 300, right around 300 and a really soft eraser at 100 percent and then selecting the top layer if I go in and erase around the horse and the rider it gets rid of that really hard green super contrasty but leaves the horse and the rider himself very high contrast it brings out some of the blown out portions of the sky the blending mode overlay is really good for a lot of, uh, like if you're going to use a fairly light texture with a lot of grit on it, it's good to add things like that. But in this case, with this particular image, um, you wouldn't necessarily want to have the horse and the rider super, super gritty and the rest of the image not as much. I mean, it's a cool effect, and depending on what you want to do in your own personal taste, you can go crazy with all kinds of blending modes and all kinds of layers added in. But for this one right here, just to demonstrate, this is basically... This is a really crappy job, by the way, too. I'm just using a big brush and going in and just eyeballing. So, as I've done it right there, if you select and unselect... You can see there are a few portions of the trees and stuff I didn't get 100%, but you can see the difference that it would make having a layer duplicated and then just erase everything else except the horse and the rider. It makes a very popping image. So that's one example of using the same image duplicated, and there are so many different layer styles you can use. Um, overlay is just one of them. If you use a soft light layer, it makes it a little less harsh than the overlay. And you can use all kinds of things. Vivid light is really cool. Uh, that's extremely grainy. It's called hard mix, and it's it's really cool for some purposes, but I wouldn't use it in normal photography very often. And you can see the image right there with the divide. It still has a lot of little marks around here you'd want to clean up if you were going to make a final image. So that's one example. I'm going to delete that duplicated layer 
and what we're going to do is select um, a fire image. So I don't know why, but the horse's head is going to be on fire, just for an example. So I'm going to copy this fire image, and I'm going to paste the fire image on top of the horse and the rider. Now, as you can see, it's an all-black background. The reason why a lot of images out there have the black background is because they're perfect for working with the screen blending mode. Now, what screen does is when you select the screen mode on your layer with the all black around it, it basically gets rid of everything that is dark, especially the blacks. But if you have like a dark brown or even like a dark gray to a lighter gray, it won't necessarily wipe those out, but it will get rid of everything that is black. So I'm going to go in and free transform, adjust the flame, spin it around a little bit because I think it should go the opposite way, rotate it just a little bit, and then I'm going to stick the fire on the horse's head. This is obviously a very, very crude example, but you would want to go in, and if you were going to do this, you'd want to go and touch up with a eraser or an adjustment brush tool just a little bit around the horse's head so that he's wearing a fire hat. I don't know why you'd want to do this, but just for this example, I decided to do that. Now, the screen mode is one of many that you can use when you're using uh, fire or uh, different layers, different items that you want to add to it. I generally try and use layers so that I can have complete 100% control over whatever effect is on that layer. You wouldn't want to necessarily have a bunch of things on one layer unless they're all the same style of thing. Like for me, if I was going to be doing multiple fires, I might do them on separate layers and then combine them into one layer so that I can edit them, uh, that element of the image altogether. But for this example, I just wanted to show what you can do with the screen layer if there is all black around the images. That's why they make those images that way. And it's really cool for adding things really quickly. Um, you don't have to erase around the layer itself. And you can put the fire you know, pretty much anywhere in the image you want to. You can warp it. Uh, you could probably duplicate it and make it look like a huge fire, possibly way in the background, and then blur it so it's not as in focus as the horse is. But that's just one more example of um, layers by themselves and how you can add them to a picture. So I've also got, in addition to the fire uh, element, which I will be making available in a link down below so people can play with it and use it in their own images, I've also got this grunge layer that I made. Um, it's really cool, it's really gritty, and it's got a little bit of like imperfections and, and marks, and there's a line down the middle, it looks like a crease of some sort. And I've used this in several projects in varying ways, sometimes only portions of this image but it's really really cool I like it for certain uh, feels it really adds a cool texture to a lot of things and for this image so I'm going to choose as an example I'm going to choose the overlay layer and then I'm going to free transform since it's in portrait mode and this shot is in landscape I'm going to free transform and then I'm going to grab the image and just scale it up so that it matches the uh, matches the horse and the rider below. A little bit of adjustments there. All right. So as you can see, it has changed the look of the image. It looks very. Uh, it looks like a picture that's seen a lot of abuse now. Overlay is really cool. Um, one of my other favorite blending modes is divide, and depending on the picture that you have underneath it, it can completely change the image. I really like using divide in elements like this because it brings out a, a worn, rugged quality, almost vintage, so you can use it for a lot of, especially if you have a really dark image with a lot of blacks in it. Um, it really heightens that particular picture in my mind. I really like the, uh, the look of it. Um, so with this, you can see there's a line going through the middle. It looks kind of like a picture that got creased, like it was folded and put away in a pocket or a scrapbook. And I mean, it just gives a really cool texture to it. It is very bright. It does tend to brighten up your picture quite a bit because of all the white that's in the original image. So you can do things with that, like if you wanted to, you could reduce the opacity. 
if you didn't want to reduce the opacity necessarily because certain elements you can see that there are certain lines that get much dimmer as you reduce the opacity what you could do instead is select the eraser brush a large eraser brush at say 50 percent and then I would just go through and hit certain parts that I don't want as um, changed by the layer and you want to go with the soft brush so it doesn't make a hard line I still want to leave that line through the middle and some around the horse but some of the other worn areas I want to make it look kind of like it's been color faded as well and maybe around the sky just to bring back some of that blue some of the darker elements all right so that's another way you can use layers um, this is on a fairly bright image so I've got another example of a all right so here's a dark image and since I still got it in my uh, clipboard I'm going to paste and free transform the same texture layer I'm going to make it a little bit bigger than the image click apply and I'm going to do the same thing with this that I did with the other one I'm going to go down and select the divide blending mode and you can see with this it doesn't bring in a whole lot of the grungy details it brings in some of them but there's so much black in here that some of that is lost so what I've done in cases like this where the image has so much black and there's really not a whole lot of detail of the texture popping through I will go and I will actually select the layer beneath and then I will go and find a gray or sometimes a white and then on a very very large brush and sometimes you want to do this on a layer that's duplicated just in case so you don't have any changes to your original photograph you still have that by itself um, so with a brush of let's say 862 just because this is already a really large image I'm going to bring the opacity down to about 15 percent now since I'm on the layer that's underneath the texture layer anything that I alter with this is actually going to show from the texture layer as well so if I go over here to the left and lightly just holding down the button on the mouse and dragging across so now I've lightened up the image underneath the layer which means it shows through a little bit more because when it's black it's just basically negating anything you're going to be seeing so that's pretty good at 15 percent it might be a little bit too bright sometimes I like to touch stuff up very very minimally and work build it up so I'm gonna go back in with 10 percent alright see that's a little bit better now it looks like a really worn photograph and I'll just go back over that black line up there alright so with my opacity at 10%, what I have done is basically gone in with a light, it's kind of like a tannish, I don't know, brown, gray, and I've painted over the original image just enough so that this texture pops through a little bit more. There's lines at the top, there's a line through the middle, and it just creates a real interesting atmosphere and a real interesting mood. And if I didn't want necessarily to have the exact same texture applied every single time since it is fairly it's almost the exact same size as the picture since I've transformed it sometimes what I'll do is I'll grab and I'll make the image huge just massive that way the only parts that I'm seeing are like a section of the texture and this will really help differentiate that way it doesn't look like using the exact same texture every single time every single you know picture you do it's the same size you can completely rotate it you could warp it you could grab this line and bend it up that way it looks like a, a very different image and you could go back in if you wanted to with the eraser tool and probably a much there we go 15 percent a much less uh, harsh opacity and maybe just erase a few of the spots that are a little blown out like on the arm and there you go there's there's several different ways to use layers so um, 
you can do all kinds of things with them. You can add tiny little elements. You can add a shadow and then just have that on its own layer and adjust it with blur or with sharpening. And the, the coolest thing about the layers is that no matter how many you add, um, you don't necessarily have to keep them. I mean, you can delete them. You can show them with on and off. It just gives you so many options for creativity. And you can add old things to any picture you can make a picture look like it's been completely burned and worn and it'll change the mood change the atmosphere very much so i'm going to include um, links to both the grunge image and the fire image on the black background so that you can use them in your own projects and play with them and test them out on various images that you have of your own um, let me know if there are any questions and if you have any uh, I don't know if you have any suggestions for future episodes, um, things that you really want to learn as far as simple things. Uh, I'm just trying to get ideas right now and provide help and hopefully spur some people's imaginations into creating their own images. So, so yeah, get out there, use your imagination, and go create some more stuff. Mm -hmm.